All right, so while we're waiting for parts for the jet ski, just gonna do a little bit of work on this trailer. Just need some new LED lights on the back of it. They're currently the old incandescent globe style. Uh, the wiring's a bit dodgy on it. Um, the old case of put your foot on the brake and everything lights up. Bit of a Christmas tree effect. Um, so we'll redo the wiring, pull the wiring through the chassis rather than having it exposed and also put a new plug on the front of it because the one that's on it's also in need of replacing. So what I'm gonna do here, I've removed the number plate um, because the new LED tail lights that I've got are slightly longer than these. Um, my plan is to take these off first, uh, take the globes out and pull the wiring through. Uh, don't really want to smash them, could possibly use them for something else. Um, so they'll just go into the shed in a box tucked away for the future. Too. I could have used that as a draw to get my new cable through, but I've got some tongue and I'll just feed through there through that conduit and pull the new one through. When I drill these holes, I'm going to use a larger size bit than these. I don't want them tight, I want to have a little bit of play so I can level the indicator and brake assembly up on the back of the trailer um, and make it look the way it should.
end up using a low voltage wire to pass through the chassis channel. Worked fine. Because I'm doing this by myself, I still have uh, that end which is coming out at the drawbar end of the trailer. Just allows me to feed with one hand and keep a bit of pressure on from the other. And by doing that, just makes the wire feed through a heck of a lot easier. Just be really careful what you pull on. Make sure you don't pull on any too much. And I think we're at the other end. All right. through. In the back of this chassis rail there's already a hole uh, which has been pre-cut for some reason I'm not sure why but it's there so I'm going to use that as a point of entry for my um, wiring to come through this drawbar channel. I'm going to drill a hole at the bottom side of this channel here so that I can feed um, feed the seven core through. We'll pop out here and this is where we'll uh, do the connection for the plug. <laughs> So, the wires pulled through to the front of the trailer, which is fantastic. Through the chassis channels, it's all protected. The next thing um, I want to hard install is this, this reverse light. It's going to sit in the center. Um, then once this is on, I know where my hardware is going, and then I can do all the wiring. So, what I want to do is I want this to be center, but I also want to make sure that my number plate can still fit in, and we're going to have to also have um, some illumination for the number plate. The measurement of this, which is 1430, this 715 to center. Check that, 715, perfect. With that, center of the trailer. If I go, this has just got two fixings. Uh, two metal self-drilling screws, so that's 250 in there, 250, that's roughly if you go like that, I just want to make sure that my number plate to fit in there, which it would perfectly. Okay. Now I just want to show in all the other holes that I've drilled in this trailer, galvanized steel, um, three and a half mil thick channel. I've started off with a small drill bit for a pilot and then moved my way up to a large drill bit. I just want to demonstrate in real time um, how much longer it takes if you're using a full size drill bit. And I'm going to use the drill in, in its slower speed. Find that these drill bits cut better and last longer if you do use them in the slower speed of the drill, even though they are classed as a HSS or a high speed steel drill bit. I find that cutting slow, they do cut much better. It's probably about the same amount of time. It is easier on the drill and a bit of a cleaner hole as well if you do um, work your way up in drill bits. It's just a good habit to be into. I'll just check this. Make sure that we're going to be. Alright, this needs to be a touch bigger. I'll drill that out, we'll get this mounted, and then uh, get the wiring going. Okay, for the wiring, what I, my aim is is to have these connections will be soldered and then shrink wrapped 
um, but my aim is to have them protected and I figure that if I get my lengths right and these joins in the right place, the slack that I pull back through this conduit, this join should then end up in the conduit which will keep it that extra little bit safe. So just trying to judge how far that is. So we'll see how we go. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is join stops and right indicator and earth. Right indicator on this will be brown to brown and then there'll be the um, common earth. So I'm gonna solder each one and then heat shrink it. There we go, look at that. Bit of patience. All right. What I'll do, I'll shrink wrap that with the heat gun and then we'll uh, wash, rinse, repeat the rest of them. Right, so now that I know that my joints are all soldered and shrink tubes, so they are watertight, I'm going to tidy this up by taping this whole section nice and tight with a good quality electrical tape. And what that'll do is it'll just tidy everything up. Times I've forgiven you in my mind. So like I said, I've got my joint taped up there. I can now feed this into that existing conduit. And that makes that a nice safe join. And I will put some corrugated uh, ducting around that and that just to give it a bit of protection. So this is my conduit. It runs across the back of the trailer that contains the wiring. Now this is my reverse um, power and earth for the reverse light that I put on. I'm gonna put a small notch in this conduit and I can roll this conduit. So if I notch it and then I feed this in with a little bit of protective conduit um, and I'll roll that back up so that'll be protected.
got to get yourself one of these things. They're amazing. up they're all heat shrunk and waterproof always start away from where you're wrapping give yourself a bit of room to work with nothing worse than being right on top of yourself And always do two runs as well. Tape's cheap. You know, it's just a little bit added. Shouldn't it shouldn't be waterproofing your joint, but for whatever reason, if it is, it's not. Like I said, it shouldn't be. The solder and heat shrink is what proofs the joint. But just give it a good wrap. Even just keeps it neat and tidy, you know. All right, so final side, the left tail light assembly. We've got yellow this time for the left indicator rather than the green that we had on the other side. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna trim this. Um, it's gonna be a little bit tighter to work in here, um, but I'm okay with that. I'll probably end up just tucking this back up inside and making it really super neat. Um, I do have a bit of room to, to tuck a bit away just so that I've got good access, but also there's not too much slack hanging around there. So let's get stuck into doing that. All right, so for this last side, I've taken off the indicator assembly. And what I'm gonna do is, is cut this wire feed that's running through that conduit shorter. I'm also gonna cut this pre-assembled wire shorter. That way when I put this back on, my slack behind, um, behind the light assembly is gonna be as minimal as possible. That way we haven't got um, any extra wire hanging down. What I've done here for extra protection, I've got a large bit of shrink tube. Um, I've squeezed it right down over the wires. I'm just gonna temporarily put a bit of tape around that. Nims decided to make a cameo and eat something. Get in. So I'll just put a little bit of tape around that and that'll just hold that there while I do these joins. So the first one of these joins is always the hardest because you can't hang anything from the light fitting. It's just going to want to not do what you want it to do. So just quickly solder that up like that. Let it sit there. Make sure your heat shrink doesn't shrink to it. So we'll just pull it over quickly as we can like that. I get no sleep. I keep thinking. I'm in too deep. I keep thinking in the south flies by. I keep thinking that I won't survive. 
So there we have a lovely sealed join there. I've sealed off my extras. I'm going to put a bit of tape around these like I did on the other side. I've got a minimal, minimal, minimal amount of slack there, which is exactly what I want. Sealed up, ready to go. I'll slide that back through. We'll get this bolt to the pin again. We'll check it out. Now for the important part. How long do you make the wire? Best gauge or rule of thumb to go by is if you pull it fairly tight to straight above the hitch, add on there another 400 mil or foot and a half. That'll give you plenty of slack. If you have to trim it down, you always can that's the best way to set these up. Gives you a little bit of slack so when your vehicle is on full lock either way, that this wire won't pull tight and destroy the joints better now. take out the connection block. We can always take the strain relief off later. We'll take this out, we'll get this wired up, and then uh, we'll put it on the ute and test it out. All right, so I've done these. I'll just show you the last one that I've got to do. It's starting to run a bit of a light, but the best way to do it is with your cable. You hold your cable over the pin that you need to, like so, you close up, and then where the end of my thumb is now, if you line it up, with that ridge in the pin and if we cut there like so then we're going to strip about 10 mil or half an inch of wire sorry that wasn't a very good example like that we twist that halve it like so and then we'll feed that into where it needs to go. Screwdriver, and we'll just tighten this up. Done. Just a side note of a little trick when you're putting the strain relief on, use a piece of the sheath that you've cut off and you can tuck it in beneath this clamp because these clamps never pull tight enough. So by doing that, you will allow the clamp to pull tight and that way when I pull on that, the strain is all on here and none on these connections. Good little trick that. Now quick side note for anyone wondering, make sure before you start doing any wiring in here on the connector block, you slide over the waterproof connector otherwise you'll be undoing it all and doing it all again. It's one of life's lessons, happens, happens to the best of us. One wide plug. All right, so we're all done. We're wired. Uh, I've conjugated, brakes are back together again. I've plugged it into the back of the ute. I'm gonna go start the ute now and just run through the cycling of the lights um, and then come back and finish up the video. Alright, everything seems to be working really well. 
um, from what I could see in the reflection. So we'll run this trailer for a couple of weeks and see how we go. I'll check back in to make sure everything's working on it. Um, and there will be a brakes video coming up on these on um, how to adjust and maintain um, cable or manual um, brakes on a trailer. And uh, that'll be a really interesting video because there's lots of trailers out there that the brakes, handbrakes especially, don't really work that well and people often get confused about how you do it.